One of the greatest things about being a writer is the ability to engage in all sorts of eccentric and bizarre behavior and have it laughingly accepted by society because you're an artist. An artist traditionally known as either a drunk or a madman. Being a writer is more or less like being publicly diagnosed with weirdo disease, and from that point on, everyone's willing to believe anything about you. This is because, as a writer, you've already made the choice to earn something akin to what a third-world cobbler for Nike might expect to earn over their lifetime, and are thus excused from society's normal requirements. Let your beard grow wild and free? Why not? You're going to be living on top ramen for the rest of your life. Wear suspenders and a belt? Vote libertarian? Spend your life murdering every living thing you're allowed to legally murder? The world shrugs, and you've already made the insane decision to write for a living. So while wallowing in the pants-free and deodorant-optional lifestyle of the working author, I can understand why, despite the obvious social and financial drawbacks of such a lifestyle, so many folks aspire to be professional writers. After all, financial security and respect within your community are overrated, especially when compared to the ability to wake up at 4 in the afternoon, immediately begin drinking, and call it research. There are many things a writer must have in order to prosecute their art and look writerly while doing it, but I thought we'd start with the most basic, the most fundamental, the single thing that tells the world that not only are you a writer, but you're a serious writer. A cat. Or cats plural, the more the merrier. Some may be shocked by this. Surely there are more recognizable totems for a writer to, uh, tote. Bottles of cheap liquor, ink-stained fingers, battered leather-bound notebooks filled with cryptic jottings, an elephant gun, and yes, yes, we will be getting to those in later installments of this exciting new commentary series. But while they might be more recognizable, trust me, cats are the secret sauce in a writing life. Cats are in fact infinitely useful when it comes to writing for a living. Cats are useful excuses. A writer's life is filled with annoying deadlines because no one understands our need to be paid to do nothing most of the time. So, cats sitting on your keyboard, consuming your manuscripts, and dominating your will with their intense ability to stare for hours can come in handy when your other excuses, alcoholism, sick dead grandparent and his many weeks, crippling agoraphobia, gout, are rejected by your publisher. Cats are good inspiration. When in doubt, add a cat that can talk, a cat that is self-aware, a cat that solves mysteries, or a cat that is secretly God. Some may feel that cats are unmanly, more a girl's pet than a man's, and that writing is already a profession lacking in the kismo, since all you do is sit at the desk making shit up instead of building things or killing people or working on your abs like real men do. So the amateurs would opt for a more macho animal companion, like a bear, or a doberman, or some sort of domesticated yeti named Boo Boo. Ah, but this is the exact opposite. No less a man's man than Ernest Hemingway, a man who volunteered to be shot at in wars and who personally tried to hunt and kill every living thing in the universe, loved cats. So much so that his old home in the Florida Keys is still burning with the descendants of his cats, many of which have six or more toes because, apparently, illegal breeding experiments on cats in pursuit of a cat super race is also a manly pursuit Hemingway dabbled in. So your initial step towards becoming a rich and powerful author, capable of toppling governments with a word and commanding armies of minions with a wave of your frail, liquor-ruined hand, is cats, and plenty of them. Forget a master's degree, forget workshops or writing groups or conventions. To get started, adopt some cats. Doubt me? Be careful, or I will send my minions after you. Of the 